What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Please follow my Instagram at Russo Lifts just in case something happens to this YouTube channel. You can follow, message, and you can watch my daily story content on Instagram. I'll see you there. What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Welcome back to the Injectable Storm Cycle Log. If you are just stopping in, I highly suggest you watch all the episodes before um, tuning into this one just because I've been repeating myself in a lot of these episodes because this channel's been growing so fast, but really I just want to get straight to the point to all the, you know, current subscribers who watch every video, so I'm just getting straight to the point, so please, you know, take the time, watch the whole cycle log. I just posted the results video of the one month of the results um, last video, so check that out. Anyways, I'm going to be talking about... Basically some side effects I've had with the YK11 being added in. I just weighed in this morning at 247.2 pounds. This is the heaviest I've ever been. And it has been, you know, an extreme weight gain. So go watch the first episode and then compare it to now. I've been doing a couple tricks to keep my insulin sensitivity there. I discussed that last video with the injectable SR9009. This is a no pump updated video of my physique at this weight now like i said the tricks were thrown in there so the sr 9009 sr 9009 has been utilized to keep my insulin sensitivity there and to keep my blood sugar as low as possible because i did not end up dropping the mk677 just yet something did come up and it's an injury and it's it was definitely preventable but Basically, I had a either a IT tweak, minor quad tear on my left leg. I was squatting at an LA Fitness that does not have a, um, a power rack. I basically have to walk the weight a very long distance out. This was recorded on my Instagram story. And I did 405 for a set of eight. Very easy, felt good. I thought maybe I would hit 455 for a triple. I've done 455 for six in the past before. I walked out 455. Just walking that weight out, although I'm so strong, is still extremely fucking dangerous. So I set up. I either I don't know what happened because my my hip. I don't know if my hip was slightly out of place or something, but my my music was blasting. I don't know exactly what happened, but when I went down my left side. There was some sort of click, tear, I don't know. I think my hip might have just been, you know, slightly buckled in place. But again, with that amount of weight, I felt a pitch in my hip and then a lot more tension on my left side for a second. Then I felt pain. I squatted down, finished one rep, and then I had no issues walking it back. Tenderness on the area, I've taken four days off of doing legs. This was my rehabilitation day, and I wanted to show, you know, my <clears throat> flat physique. So, like I said, this is not pumped up. This is just what I look like at this weight. So, there's a few things that could have led to this happening. Number one, I think I would like to point the finger at YK11 just, you know, to share the side effects of YK11 on how tendons and joints definitely take a hit. So the YK11 was being added in, or it could just be simply walking 455 that far. A slight, you know, pitch in my hip could have happened from just walking it out and having to set up my stance so far away from the rack. Moral of the story, after you get above 365, don't be walking weights. Like I, I literally walked 455, like probably eight steps forward and back. <laughs> So, luckily, I think it is fine. I added MK677 back in for the healing properties of 677, having my GH higher. And, you know, I've been just putting blood, doing air squats every day, and pushing blood and nutrients back into my leg. This was my rehabilitation day, so felt good, but minor setback. Again, if you guys watched the last video, my goal was to drop the 677, pull the water weight off, Keep the YK11 at an extremely micro dose constant and then add in LR3 to kind of finish this bulk off and you know gain as much mass as possible and then clean it up because I will be going to the Arnold Expo at the Muscle Gels booth. 
I don't want to be the bloat lord as much as I am the goat of bloat, you know. My clothes aren't fitting right right now. I just I just feel so sluggish. <clears throat> My blood pressure is still completely normal. I, I blame that basically because I was a long distance runner in high school. I think any other person who did this extreme weight gain than I did to prove, you know, the power of injectable arms probably would feel terrible right now. I really don't. My joints definitely feel compromised from the YK and just the extreme weight gain. But overall, <clears throat> feeling good. Now, getting into the other point of the video is the switch from regular injectable LGD to Nano XR LGD. So this is my unbiased thoughts. Again, no ploy other than just stating exactly how I feel. So a lot of people are wondering, do I notice the XR, aka the extended release? My opinion, I do. I did notice because I stuck to the same protocol as the regular, which was an ED protocol, EOD protocol, and I continued that same protocol. However, and my levels definitely were really, really high because I had a blood pressure spike on the third day of remaining that same protocol with the Nano XR, meaning that my levels were an astronomically higher um, from switching over to the XR. So marketing bullshit or not with the XR Nano, I can definitely st say that I switched my protocol and did not do as many injections because my levels were built up so much from switching to the Nano. Again, that's just what I've noticed and that's an anecdotal report. I have no concrete evidence of proving that my level stayed longer. That's just personally how I felt and I did have to change my protocol because of the side effects noticing that, you know, my dosage was way higher from what I felt personally. So as far as strength side switching from normal to nano, like I said, the blood levels were definitely, in my opinion, higher based on the side effects I was experiencing, such as blood pressure increase higher body temp and overall way more cramping after I adjusted my protocol, lowered my injections and did, you know, every three days instead of EOD, ED with the normal and regular injectable SARMs. You know, it felt very, virtually very similar, <clears throat> you know, still androgenic sides that I wouldn't really notice with the oral. I've had a bit more body hair growth, which is kind of out of whack considering oral LGD. I've done high dosage oral only, no test space before gear, had no androgenic sides such as that, and I definitely don't think it's my little test space because my test space just continues getting lower and lower as the cycle continues. I'm just utilizing the test basically for exogenous estrogen and a little tiny bit more nitrogen retention and muscle fullness, but overall, nano and regular i'd say the only difference would be pinning frequency so far again it's only been about a week switch so i will keep you guys posted but this is kind of the chapter of where i just changed out one variable of the cycle to let you know the difference and then i will be you know doing exactly what i said earlier in the video which is getting this mk677 water weight off me i mean you can just see it in my face all over my body it's just amazing the tricks I've been doing to keep my blood glucose levels there, to keep my in insulin sensitivity there. So I think most people would have been fat by now utilizing the 677 protocol I've been playing around with. So yeah, I just, as I was basically only gonna go until my sensitivity was gone and I was just putting on fat. Um, I've been able to do all the tricks in the book to continue pushing nutrients and stuff into my muscles and just not letting it all go to fat so I'm super excited to see all the new mass actually shown off without the water and see all the new gains and to actually pop and look 3d I look extremely natty from the um, SR 9009 basically making me flat and you know obviously having a shit ton of fucking water weight all over me but that is what I think of Nano versus regular. I definitely did notice the extended release personally, and that's just not bullshitting anyone. I 100% tried to stay with the same protocol as a regular and had a back down because I noticed higher dosage side effects that I did not want.